everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A Emails 23. So let's get right to it. First email is from John Mans Mancuso. Dear Mark Sargent, I am an American living in Tokyo, Japan. I've been enjoying your videos and have been watching them with great interest. I'm not exactly how sure I stumbled on your YouTube channel. I can only guess one of your videos must have been listed on the sidebar of related videos. I cannot consider myself a flat earther. I'm not even sure of the spelling yet, <laughs> but I'm getting closer with every passing day. A week or so ago, I was listening to your interview on Coast to Coast. Well, I think it was that program, but I see that you or someone else removed it because of a copyright infringement. Is there any way that I can listen to that interview? Also, what do you think of the work by Eric Dubay? Thank you for your time. Warmly, John. Uh, yes, John, an, an excellent point, because Coast to Coast does not like anyone rebroadcasting their stuff. Even, even if I was interviewed by them, they made me sign a waiver saying that I wouldn't rebroadcast it. I don't know if you can find it still out there. I will look for you, but if I can't find it, I've, I think I've got it somewhere lying around. Maybe, maybe I can dig it up for you. So... Just stay tuned, I'll, I'll see what I can do there. This next one is from Roland. Hey there, like many others, I discovered the Flat Earth Truth from your series of clues. Since then, I've discovered all the other great work being done by guys like Jaron or the Morgyle, to name but a few. The point of this email is to bring to light an issue, and hopefully you will address this on the air. I watch most of the main Flat Earth Truthers on YouTube and think think each one has a valid opinion, but what I cannot stand is the constant shill calling and finger pointing. It makes no sense. It is, is it caused by jealousy? This shouldn't be about fame or attention. It seems Eric Dubay has labeled every single flat earther online as a shill. I respect those like you who tend to stay away from such talk. I could go further and say it was started to bring about the downfall of this recent Flat Earth Truth resurgence, but I'll cut this short. All this crazy controversy is only a diversion that we cannot afford. Anyways, I just wanted to express the views and frustration of a truth seeker watching it from the outside. P.S. If anyone is a shill, it's Mr. Dubay. <clears throat> well. I don't think, Roland, that anybody in the movement currently is a shill. I don't. Eric's got his own thing going. I know he's king of his own castle with his own Flat Earth Society. And he's over in Thailand and he doesn't run into a lot of the Flat Earthers on the state side or the European side. I can only tell you that I'm, I'm not and I have not met anyone that I would ever consider a official disinfo agent. It's, it, it, really, it's... It's the only reason we have dissension in the ranks, the only reason we have infighting is because we don't have a common target to go after. If Neil deGrasse Tyson was attacking us every single week, that's all anyone, everyone would just be hammering on him and they wouldn't, we wouldn't be squabbling amongst each other. We're just a, 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 a bored and restless army that doesn't have an opponent that's worth our time right now. Hopefully we'll be able to fix that though in the near future. This next one is from Leo. Hello, Mark. My name is Leo. I live in Orlando, Florida. I subbed over the Flat Earth Clues two years ago, and it really reconditioned my way of life and thinking. I'll get to the point because I know you have lots of emails to read. My dilemma is with the Flat Earth and the church. How is it pastors don't see the importance of the firmament and the 2017 biblical teaching? I'm a member of a great congregation here. The problem I'm having is that they're teaching global knowledge. For example, we don't live in a broad universe, but an enclosed world. My question is, should I leave this church and try to connect with other Flat Earth Bible following folks? Please give out my email, Mark. Thank you. And I will. His email address is leoallenrobinson at gmail.com. So leoallenrobinson at gmail.com. And his question, should he be leaving the church? No, no, don't leave the church. Pastors are under pressure like everyone else. The conditioning for the globe earth is so total and so deep that even a pastor with all his biblical knowledge behind him has a really tough time justifying the, the whole flat earth 
way of thinking. They, they just don't know what to do with it because they're taught as children. It's a globe. It's a globe. It's a globe over and over and over and over for 12 years. If you, if you get through high school, that's that's all you and mainstream media and all your entertainment shows. I mean, again, think about Star Wars and Star Trek and Battlestar Galactica and, and Stargate. Just, three different series with star in the title it's all complete conditioning and uh pastor is is no he's just a man like anyone else he's got to f figure out figure it out for himself with time they you know he will come around as well so hopefully people will email you by the way this next one's from chris hi mark i have truly enjoyed your work love strange world and the recent interview with daphne Please contact Titus Frost on YouTube and request a Flat Earth debate. He's cocky and resolute, so I believe a debate is in order. Best to you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Uh, has Titus Frost made a bunch of YouTubes against Flat Earth? If so, somebody send me one or two, and I, I don't know if I'll debate him. I don't know if he's worth our time. We're, we're actually looking for bigger targets, but who knows? It's possible, I suppose. But if he's just a jerk, just some troll, I mean, look, Red, Red's rhetoric gave it several shots. That isn't going anywhere, and we've dealt with people bigger than him. Next email is from Andy. Hi, Mark. I'm just finishing watching your excellently presented video. I have some questions. The most troubling aspect for me is that although I can take on board NASA covering up all these years, why would all of the hundreds of apparent satellites be a hoax too? Where do Google Earth get their images from? I'm half in and out on this subject, and this will help me make my mind up. Thanks, Andy from Denmark. Well, that explains his, his sentence structure. <coughs> well, Andy, here's the deal. You're holding on to some things and giving up others. You, some people say, uh, well, I don't believe in the moon missions, but the satellites have to be real, don't they? Google Earth looks like a real picture, doesn't it? Well, no, they tell you it's a real image, but it's a composite image. There's, there's no real-time satellites at that distance tracking things that for Google, they're not there. Who told you there were satellites up there in the first place? The same guys that told you the Americans went to the moon? Those guys? Find me pictures of satellites taking images of other satellites. Find me some of those. Find me a satellite that has real-time HD footage from anywhere. Uh, and don't give me the Himawara satellite or the other crap. Himawara satellite, for, by the Japanese satellite, is a perfect example. It's taking weather morphine on an Earth, but the Earth isn't spinning. And there is other satellites just recently that show the Earth rotating, but the weather isn't morphine. Apparently, they can't do both at the same time. In fact, if you could show me one that does both at the same time in any sort of high definition... I think you'd be able to present a case for yourself, maybe not for our community, but at least the, the world at large, but you haven't done that, so why not? So that, that's my answer. Find, you, you want to know the answer to satellites? Find pictures of satellites from space, actual images of satellites. And if even still shots would be better than nothing, but find me video, it'd be even better. Find me video of a satellite speeding by another satellite. With all the thousands and thousands of, of supposed satellites up there, why does this never ever happen? You gotta wonder why. It's interesting, isn't it? This next one's from <clears throat> uh, Curtis. Hello, once again, Mark. I'm a huge supporter, and I believe once an event horizon is reached with the entire Flat Earth conspiracy, you should be one of the main spokesmen to help all the dullards out there with their deprogramming. I've always been a truth seeker, always from the Bible-believing Christian perspective. So like you, I thought I had a grasp on just about every conspiracy out there until the Flat Earth warhead was dropped on me. Oh, that's good. Before I knew about Flat Earth, and obviously after I have been aware of our favorite rock and scientist, Werner Von Braun's... Sorry, I've been talking a lot. I gotta have some tea. <clears throat> uh, late confession of the three-stage process to bring about the New World Order, minus Hulk Hogan. Funny. First, uh, the somewhat empty threat of communism with the 50-year-long Cold War. Second, the overinflated threat of terrorism dealing with the Islamic radicals. The third and final step is bringing about a one-world government uh, being the fake alien invasion. I am a Trump supporter, and I do believe he has thrown a monkey wrench in the elite's plans, but I have a theory on why he was allowed to get in office. 
Trump so far is doing everything he promised he would do, unlike every other politician. What if he is the man in place, either by the elites or just by chance, to finally eliminate Islamic terrorism, therefore completing the second stage? The full exposure of Flat Earth is critical before the third stage of the fake invasion, in order for far less people to be deceived. What are your thoughts? And thanks again for all that you do, Curtis. It's interesting. Very possible if you believe the confession by Werner von, von Braun that yes, the last thing would be a fake alien invasion. Yeah, if the, if the storyline is going to move forward, it seems very logical. There's been a lot of alien programming of going all the way back to the 1950s, which means that every age demographic will have some different version of dealing with the alien threat, alien presence, whatever you want to call it. So sure, uh, but yeah, I, I also do think that Trump is a complete puppet from, from day one. He has no real power, like, like any other president going all the way back before Kennedy. Eisenhower was the, Dwight D. Eisenhower was the last president with any power, and that was because he was a military powerhouse. So, <clears throat> yeah, very possible. I'm, I'm hoping for something this year. I think 2017 is going to be a big, big year. This one is from Leon. Hi, Mark. Blatant lyrics after one minute and 50 seconds. And he's the guy that sent in the Illinois plate, It's Flat. And the video in question was a YouTube video called How Ketchum Small Town Saturday Night. Check that out. It's uh, The YouTube channel is called Rare Country Videos. And apparently after the one minute and 50 second section, there's some great lyrics. And I, I'm not going to try to quote them right now. But interesting. This next email is from Cool Beans. No real name. Hey, Mark, I've been a knower of the truth of the flat earth for more than a year and a half, having made four YouTube videos describing the measure of the eight inches per mile squared on the YouTube channel Pascalore. Hope you don't mind my using a portion of one of your radio show audio clips describing the view of a campfire across a 12 mile lake. Gold, Jerry, it's gold passing on. But here is the reason for this email. I was watching the movie 2012 yesterday for the third time and this morning it hit me. After they boarded the Russian airplane in the attempt to get to China, the Earth experienced a crustal displacement which moved China closer to them by something over a thousand miles. They stated the actual distance but that is not what is important. What is important is that the crust moved under them while they were in the air and moved close China closer to them. Wait a minute, did they just prove that the Earth beneath an airplane isn't moving because the Earth isn't spinning and only when the crust moves independently of the planet would you experience ground shifting underneath a flying af aircraft? I think not. Many have seen that movie and accepted the premise of the ground moving under an aircraft under certain conditions. The land should be moving under all aircraft as soon as they lift off the ground and lose the momentum that ground contact transferred to them. How do you fly from a city in Canada and arrive back in that city without turning your airplane? Start from a city six hours away from the North Pole and fly straight over it. In 12 hours, it should be in front of you by the time you complete your trip. Thanks for all you do, and I will keep listening to all the info that is being discovered by the many real people on this flat earth. That email was called Spinning or Not Spinning in the Movies. And as you know, I'm a great movie buff, so if you guys have any movie tidbits to send me, I'm more than happy to read them. This one's from Vincent Mulhern. Great name. Sent for my iPhone. Interesting that it will actually show up before the email. Hi, Mark. I've been listening to you and others for the last 10 months. I'm convinced the Earth is flat. I don't tell too many people because it's exhausting trying to explain it and to them. My brother recently found out I think the Earth is flat and thinks I've lost my mind. I have sent him videos of flat Earth research from you and Eric Dubay, etc. I know he doesn't really watch them, he's just trying to debunk them. The only one I have a problem to prove to him is the one about the direct flight from New Zealand to Argentina. I know you explain this in one of your videos, but I need a little more explanation. Is this a fake flight? Is this a real flight? But they are lying about the time it takes. I would really appreciate if you get back to me. Thank you, Mark from Vincent. And yeah, I, I did try to explain it the best I could, and that is... When the flight takes off, do I think it's a real flight? Yeah, I think it's possibly a real flight. And 
do the, the problem is you can't prove the route because GPS drops the plane off the the latitude and longitude go into estimated or approximated mode now could it get there in the correct amount of time okay if it does you still can't prove the route and even if you took a beeline some people say well you know the beeline it's still going to be longer than the time that it took to fly it's like okay fine then the land masses that it had to cross the perspective is wrong there's something there's something wrong with the map which is why several people have been trying to redraw the map because we know that the proportions are a little bit off not a ton off but off enough to where the flights may make it in a in the in the right amount of time but again, you still got to wonder why there's so many flights that have these weird, weird connections and so few direct flights. If it was so easy, then why aren't they all direct flights? That's the part that, that nags at me quite a bit. This next one is from... Who is this from? I can't tell. Eric, but it's spelled A-R-E-K. Interesting letter about the firmament in Antarctica. Hello, Mark. I think you should find this letter interesting. It is a copy of the letter that someone posted on one of the Facebook Flat Earth groups. I'm a Flat Earth for about two years now and also live in the Seattle area. Keep up the good work. Have a nice day. Sincerely, Eric. And I'm not going to read this one. I just wanted to mention it to you. It was supposedly written by someone that worked out at McMurdo Research Station, and they were talking about sky ice and how they, were, they, they need special gloves to handle it, and it was only dropping in Antarctica. So if you want to read this email, it's, it's out there in different places and different videos. Just look up Antarctica Sky Ice, and you will find this. I, I'm not going to go into its entirety here because I'm not completely convinced that it's got really any legitimacy. It's an interesting story, but I just don't think it's, it's uh, true, to be honest. This next one's from Dan. Hey, Mark, I am a surveyor in New York, NYS, is that New York? NYS, in, well, it doesn't matter. I've surveyed professionally for 20 years. I've been working out the mathematics and the Gleason map and found some pretty interesting things that are too precise to be coincidences. I would like to speak to, with you if you have time. My number is blah, blah. Thanks for your time. Sincerely, Dan. So yeah, I will call him. This one's called On Air Email Letter. Hey, Mark, my name is Colin. I'm a huge fan of all your work, your work with Patricia, as well as many others within this thriving new community. I am the one who sent Patricia that lengthy email, which was not intended originally for on-air reading, and hence details were withheld because Patricia already knew me and that I was a relative newcomer, but still strong supporter of Flat Earth. I just haven't posted any YouTube videos yet, although I have been diligently working hard on my very first vid, thanks to the amazing inspiration from <clears throat> you and Patricia and several other pioneers in this subject. I definitely am ardent, am an ardent proponent of a flat, motionless Earth that very well may be an infinite plane and will continue to believe that until I have any evidence to the contrary. The information I have stumbled upon and mentioned in summary email to Patricia steadfastly disproves all known theories of gravity while simultaneously proving how all physical quantities are variable, not fixed, and caused by inertial forces. This information I have is very powerful and may be used to explain and reinterpret Galileo's first famous experiment to show that his results actually demonstrate perfectly how a uniform field of gravity around the Earth does not exist and is definitely not what it was originally presented as. It's not just a Sagnac. The Michelson-Morley Foucault pendulum experiments, which were confused, misrepresented, and misinterpreted by mainstream science, but all scientific experiments since the beginning of astronomy need to be revisited and reanalyzed by flat earthers from the zetetic perspective, and only then will pivotal information immediately supporting many of our conclusions leap to the foray. The following is a list of discoveries I have made and wish to contribute to the flat earth community. But without giving away the keys to the candy store to speak simply, I can retain involvement in their publication. Each of these are to be interpreted, interpreted as almost exclusively new proofs or new disproofs that strongly enhance the overall position of Flat Earth while simultaneously disproving anything remotely like heliocentrism. Uh, let's see. One, geometry of horizon theron. Two, disproving globes using sea level. Three, prove initial point. Four, prove real cause of star trail starlight paths. Five, prove zero point energy as existent potential. 
6. Prove how differently gravi gravity must operate even if it were true. 7. Disprove gravity. 8. Disprove lunar orbit. Uh, and so on and so on. He's got 15 different ones. Uh, all the above I can contribute in exciting new ways to help further establish flat earth while disarticulating all of the heliocentrism and modern astronomy. I simply shared the most important of my discoveries with Patricia and had I even the remotest shred of doubt in any of my conclusions, I would not have emailed anyone or wasted anybody's time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is anyone's interested in all this guy's work and, and well, it could be could be some really good good stuff in here. He, he gave his email out here, so his email is Colin Sweeney, C O L I N Sweeney S W E E N E Y thirty at yahoo.com. Colin Sweeney at yahoo.com. And I've, he's been studying physics and cosmology for twenty five years. Knows what he's talking about, and yeah. So anyone wants to to write him directly. Please, by all means, send him a quick email and, and, and he'll send you what he's got. And who knows, this may open up a whole new wing of discoveries for the Flat Earth community. So thank you very much, Colin. This one's from Robin. It bewilders me how a ball Earth can create a half moon shadow, literally straight line down the middle much less the moon phases that follow. We'd have to have a concave Earth to create the moon phases preceding full moon. Your insight would be greatly appreciated. Sincerely, rockin' flat Earth, Robin. I, when it comes to the sky, I'm going to stick with the same thing I, I've stuck with now for at least a year, and maybe not more, which is Everything can be simulated. The, the hard stuff is on the ground. The, the sky system is just the sky system. It's no different than the planetariums we build now. When you go to Hayden Planetarium, run by NDT, the what can't they do? If they want to create a crescent moon, uh, you know, waxing, waning, blood moon, comets, whatever you want, that's just something they program in. It's it's not hard. It's just part of the display system. So, again, focusing on the sky, that's good. Great. Star trails, you can, you can do some fun stuff up there. <clears throat> but don't ask what's possible or how it can be done because we can do it on a smaller scale now. Not knocking your question, Robin. I just think that you could be focusing on, on bigger things. This one's called Gleason Map. It's by... Nope. It's not called Gleason Map. That was a different one. Sorry. This one's... Am I not deleting these in time? Sorry. This one's from Melissa. Hi, my name is Melissa. I just came across one of your videos. I'm a new flat earther. I've become a bit obsessed. I watch videos on YouTube almost every day. I just wanted to say I commend you and the many others who are coming forward with their videos. I didn't know the rabbit hole ran so deep. I, too, am a big conspiracy buff, and like all the other Flat Earthers, went from denial, mocking the idea, thinking, what a joke, to accepting the Flat Earth fact. Thank you for your grace and bravery. I tried to share with a couple people, but no luck yet. It's a hard pill to swallow. Anyway, thank you. If you have any videos or info to share, feel free to email me back. Sincerely, Melissa. And I will email her back, because I would love, you know, if... She's going to start sharing this with other people. She should know about the Flat Earth shortlist for new people that is on my YouTube channel, Mark K. Sargent, which is a great cross-section of about 20, 25 different videos of all different lengths and, and education levels. That's, you know, throw it at that at the general population and, and see what sticks, see what they, what they gravitate towards. This one's from Rob. Scottish meetups. Hi, Mark. You did a shout out for Rob and Louise, and that's uh, Lou Star at iCloud.com. Sent them an email, but I know, but no reply. My email may be in a spam folder. I arranged a meeting last year in Glasgow. Glasgow, Glasgow. Eight attended, went okay. Next should be held in Paisley near Glasgow. Dates and times to follow. Rob. So if anyone's in the Glasgow area, you can email him at orbicular.exempt at gmail.com. That's O-R-B-I-C-U-L-A-R dot E-X-E-M-P-T at gmail.com. Hopefully you can get something going. 
This one's called, Are You Available for a Short Conversation? These talking about the, I won't give out his name necessarily because it looked like he was trying to keep it private. He, he was saying the heat generated from flying at Mach 3.3 in the SR-71, which is made out of titanium, would destroy the aluminum of all rocket payload capsules. I never thought of this until about a year ago. Look up the max performance for the Blackbird, the frame expansion, etc., and the temperatures at 85,000 feet at that speed. Look at the final flight of the Blackbird from Los Angeles to DC and the guesstimate the speed. To put a rocket in orbit, the speed is accelerating from approximately 6,000 miles an hour to over 12,000 between the altitudes of 80 and 120,000 feet. In the case Sorry, eighty kilom. I'm sorry, eighty thousand. Yeah, eighty to hundred thousand, hundred twenty thousand feet. In the case of Apollo, the roll to follow the curvature of the Earth starts at about thirty-five to forty-five thousand feet. Now look at the re-entry of the space capsule, the heat shield. It decelerates from seventeen thousand five hundred miles an hour to seven hundred or so in the same atmosphere. That heat shield is not aluminum. Just food for thought. Interesting. This one's called, I think Nibiru is a reflection. I believe Nibiru is one of the two things, is one of two things actually. It's been proven the earth is being bleached, so the sun is getting stronger. I would love some unbiased truth seekers pictures of Nibiru, but even then we can't see the depth. I honestly believe it's just reflections on the dome when we see them. When we see the sun and a second sun, it's where it gets interesting, and I have two theories. First is the sun reflecting. We have seen sunspots in high-altitude balloon shots. If it has a single stronger shine, then it could be shining off the dome, and we would see a sun based on the angle of the sun. Would we even need that to happen, though? They have the sun generators or reflectors that could do that, too. The second is that we are a plane with a plane above us with stars and the map from the 1907 paper is correct. The sun could be rotating in from outside of the ice wall. There is, are all kinds of ice breaking off in Antarctica and they let us know about the fear aspect, but I see through that. Our world is changing again. Anyways, would love to chat about this more as I couldn't find a Flat Earth Nibiru debunking video. It could be huge. Atmospheric lensing could even answer a lot with either option. We are getting closer to a truth, and even though I really only got into conspiracy theories at the beginning of September of 2016, I have really dived into everything and learned that there are no conspiracy theories, just a lot of things hidden from us. The answers are in front of us using basic deduction and not the religion of science fantasy as much as as I look back sometimes. It just hurts. I wanted it all to be real. My name is Chris Mowry, and I'm a flat earther. <laughs> nice. Great ending. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. It's fantastic. This one's from David. Correct answer was, what are Pennsylvania? Final Jeopardy. Final Jeopardy, the USA. The final Jeopardy question on February 2nd in the category USA was the Empire State Building says on a clear day you can see five states from the top. New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and these two. What are Pennsylvania and Massachusetts? Huh, he says. How is this possible on a ball earth? Interesting. And I'm sorry it took me so long to get this email, but it's a great question. The Empire State Building on, says on a clear day you can see five states from the top. New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Pennsylvania. How is this possible if it's curved? It's good. It's awesome. And a Jeopardy question. This one's called Regarding the Greatest Lie Ever. Mark, I joined your forum, started watching some videos, and have some questions. But probably best if I watch most of the videos before asking. First video, I heard you say that you were reporting from Victoria, Canada. I didn't know you were Canadian. I'm also Canadian. I'll be in touch. <laughs> That's the whole email. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not in Victoria, Canada right this second. I'm down in near Seattle, Washington, but I'm going back up to Victoria in just a couple days, provided they don't stop me at the border. And I'm not, no, I'm not Canadian. I'm, I'm the United, I was born in Seattle and I just happened to be dating a lovely person that's up 
in Victoria, Canada, which is just west of Vancouver. This one's called Just a Thank You, sent by Melissa. Hi, my name is Melissa. I just came across one of your videos. I'm a new flat earther. I've become a bit obsessed. I watch videos on YouTube almost every day. I just want to say I commend you and the many others who are coming forward with their videos. I didn't know the rabbit hole ran so deep. I, too, am a big conspiracy buff and like all the other consp other flat earthers, went from denial, mocking the idea, thinking what a joke, to accepting the flat earth fact. Thank you for your grace and bravery. I've tried to share with a couple people, but no luck yet. It's a hard... Wait a minute, I've already read this one. Hard pills to swallow. Did I... She sent it to me twice. God darn it. Don't send the emails twice if you can help it. I, I, I check my spam folder every day. Send it once. If it doesn't bounce back to you, you don't have to send it twice. And the reason why I didn't catch it originally was that I only skim the emails and just look for anything super weird that, that I don't want to read. And in her case, I didn't recognize it, but... Sorry, guys. This one's from my friend Rowan. Rowan writes, thanks a lot. I listened to some of your show from Tuesday and checked out that girl's YouTube channel. Pretty amusing, the textbook discussion. I did the same with my 10 year, my 10 daughter's science book. Amazing stuff. I was wondering if you had any bulletproof experiment ideas that you've been dreaming up to prove flat earth beyond a reasonable doubt. I had a few ideas for stuff around Victoria. One would be to take a decent telescope telephoto camera down to Dallas Road and look up across to Port Angeles. Uh, Jaron and I were actually thinking of doing that with a few, gu few guys a while back, at least a year ago. But do missing curvature videos actually prove anything these days? Another idea was a line of sight boat experiment similar to the Bedford level. There's a beach I used to live by called Cadborough Bay that has navigation buoys visible to the naked eye from the beach. I haven't been able to find any record or charts or indexes of these buoys to use as a reference. I guess if we knew the height, we could derive the distance from them perhaps? Anyways, I guess I'm still in the undecided phase, even though I'm very open to flat earth, I'm still in the closet. Uh, not ready to shine a light on it. I wonder how many millions of skeptical guys like me are out there consuming media and not openly public about it. Hope you're well. Keep me in the loop if you guys are planning any experiments or meetups. And yeah, I'm going to send him the link to the convention after I am done with this. This one is another movie reference one. It's called Movie References. Mark, this is kind of out there, but since visual media keeps pumping this stuff out, I thought I would share. I'm in the movie industry and a Comic-Con nerd with professional status. Uh, okay, all right. I was thinking about Antarctica, because I've been to Comic-Con. That's why I had that weird reaction. I was thinking about Antarctica and ring references in movies. The latest movie, The Ring 2, first you watch it, then you die. That might suggest not to look into it. Gollum in The Lord of the Rings. He is obsessed with the ring and it drives him crazy. It has occurred to me that the Earth has a ring of ice. With its ring of ice is a portal. It's covered with a firmament to keep us in. The key to open it, to raise our frequency, through being in harmony with each other. We can do this through free will or be forced or be forced it with Satan's plan, transhumanism, for example. I'm thinking that both are happening right now. Which will you choose? Will we ring the doorbell and ask if we may come in? Oh, I see what you did there. Or will we try to kick the door open and be greeted with a 12 gauge <laughs> to center mass, respectively, Steve? Interesting. Like like where you're going there, thinking outside the box or the dome, as it were. Excellent. This one's called Harp. Mark was thinking this might be something you could do a video on. Just my thoughts. A lot of people know about Harp, as I'm sure you are aware of. But incorporating the flat earth into it and all the fact that there is a dome over us changes the game altogether and can make it easier to understand why harp is so much more effective on a domed flat earth as opposed to a globe. No? Clint. And he's absolutely right. A harp is way more effective in a, in a domed environment because you can bounce off the ceiling. You, that's, why, that's why I think harp works. I don't think harp would work like anything if it was a globe. 
I think it has to be a dome structure, and that was why Harp was built. I think they knew full well when they were building. It's like, okay, let's see if we can start bouncing stuff around, and that's that's how Harp works. Good, good point. Good call. This one's called Independent Confirmation of Bob and Cammy's Find. A nice listener named Colin wanted me to forward this to you and Bob. And right, got that, got that. I read, I read that part, so we'll move on. This one's called, nope, nope, not doing that one. This one's called A Push Against the Globe and Let's Hurry Up. Hi, Mark, and greetings from Norway. Yes, I am sick and tired of the globalists. Yes, I am sick of the lies, the pollutions of our water and the air we breathe. I am tired of all the deceptions, propaganda, and the wars on our minds. I've had it up to my ears for so long that I have finally realized the truth. You can't have both. You can't be truly happy and know the truth at the same time. Listen, life is too short. I want to tear down the curved globe so much that I'm willing to pay for it to happen. If we can't travel to Antarctica ourselves, what about the next best thing? I suggest we use world-class remote viewers, a lot of them, to take a look-see at the Earth's shape, the dome, if any, and what's beyond the ice wall, etc. If you can line up a handful or two of world-class remote viewers that's that are up for the task, I promise you right here and right now that I will personally pay them all myself. You li line up Dick Allgaier and his crew, and I will pay whatever it costs. If you line up Edward Riordan and Daz Smith, I will pay them too. Even the Farsight Institute can come along and I will pay them all to look at this task we give them. What do you say, Mark? You fix a lineup and I PayPal you whatever you need to get it done. Best regard, Nordic, Nordic alien. <laughs> all right, Nordic alien. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give out your email address and if somebody wants to set this up with, like as it is in Norway, it is a Norway address, wants to set this up. If you guys know some remote viewers, I don't know any, but if you know any, Contact this guy and tell him Mark sent you and you can play him part of this interview if you want. His email address is nuxa at hotmail.no. Nuxa at hotmail.norway. It's very possible. Remote viewing, I don't think, is, is the, a silver bullet here that's going to solve it one way or the other because I, I think remote viewing, even, even though I, I do think it's got some merit because governments have, have been using it for years, the, the the system would also be designed on multiple levels so that your first remote viewer isn't going to know it. I think you've got to still got to be looking for it. The the all the indoctrination and all they've been all you've been taught about the globe would sink into your subconscious. And so if you were doing remote viewing, you would still want to see a globe. Remember, there's still people out there that say they see the curvature of the earth from a beach. They're convinced of it. They'll they'll sign a waiver that you can document and frame that say they can see the curvature of the earth from the beach, but it's not there. They take a picture and, and of it and put a straight edge up to it. There's there's no curve. So a remote viewer is going to have a tough time too because they want to see the, the globe as much as the people on the beach do. This one's called Flat Earth Questions. Hello, Mark. Just want to say thanks for coming forward and creating the Flat Earth Clues video. Over the summer of 2016, I came across your video and absolutely blew my mind. It baffles me how it's something that we never question unless the thought is put into our heads. Growing up, I always wondered why I never felt the Earth moving or why there's no visible evidence or movement at all from an individual perspective. There's quite a stigma and a societal societal thing going on. For some reason, you can't question the shape of the earth, even though you can't prove it's a ball on your own. Every proof for it being a ball is provided by the powers that be. A lone person on their own can't provide proof. Your senses don't lie to you. Your video awoken these old questions I had as a young boy and absolutely blew my mind. I'm leaning towards being a flat earther at this point, but there's still some lingering questions I have that I hope you can enlighten me on. In a flat earth model, what's the explanation for meteors and eclipses? Oh man, been answering that one for a long time. Okay, meteors, small pieces of metal ore injected into the atmosphere at speed. Take your pick, rail gun, unified field gun, whatever you want. It's, it, shoot it at a shallow angle, let 
friction, do the rest, try not to aim at major cities. Eclipses is just part of the upper display system. The, if the sun and the moon are some sort of physical objects, then it can be done that way. Or, again, it can be simulated. We can do eclipses in a planetarium right now. Right this, right this second. We have been able to for years. Go down to the Hayden Planetarium. Go, go talk to NDT. Tell them Mark sent you. After watching your entire documentary and a bit of Eric DeBay's videos, it's still a thing that hasn't exactly been addressed. I disagree. What causes those two phenomena? Because they're they're fake. They're they're artificial. It's just a part of the display system. It's just again, it's you're you're trying to hold on to the conditioning that you 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 won't you won't let go of it yet. That's the only reason. Meteors and eclipses. Thanks a lot. Keep doing what you're doing. And that's from Tyree. This one's called Flat Earth Q, of course. Hi, Mark. Jeannie A. Papadopoulos from Edmonton, Alberta, who called you this morning and didn't leave the question. It was about the big wall of ice in the picture I assume was taken when explorer Richard Bird was there. It's not very clear, but it looks like a shack with smoke coming out of the chimney and a giant ladder propped up against a wall of ice stretching upwards with what looks like a person about a quarter of the way up on it. The ice stretches in both directions, left and right, giving the impression of that edge he talked about. Are you, you sure wonder what was up on the other side? Did they not take any other pictures or are they never shown? A true Truman here, eh? JP, otherwise known as Jeannie Papadopoulos. Er, well, Jeannie, I, I haven't seen this picture you're talking about and I've seen a lot of pictures so far. So if you have access to this picture, I don't know where you found it, send it to me if you're listening to this. In fact, you know what? I'm going to email her right this second and say, well, in fact, while well, I got her on here, I'll send me this picture or link wherever you saw it. Thanks. Mark. Who knows? Maybe she found a picture in a hidden, dusty, cobwebby corner of the internet that nobody knows about. This one's called Flat Earth, real original. Hi, Mark. I am in Ireland and I am confused. Con confused. We're all confused. I'm a confirmed flat earther. Starting, started looking at this about a year ago and at first was dismissive, but like many, I came around and I'm now convinced. One thing though that puzzles me, and maybe you've covered this, but I haven't seen it. The curved shadow you see on the moon at times. If the earth is flat, who is causing the shadow? Why so many shadow things this week? Look, <clears throat> we can simulate curved shadows right now. It's not hard to do. It's just part of the display system. You got to think bigger. Got to think bigger. That's all. I'm not, not picking on the guy. It's just I've gotten so many shadow questions today. This one's called U2 Earth Flyover. Hello, Mark. My name is Curtis, and I know you're a very pers busy person, but the imagery from the 30 second to 1 minute 50 second in this video time is very interesting, especially 1 minute 37 seconds where the altitude is shown best Curtis. So I click on the link. The link takes me to, oh, what's that thing? The U2 edition. Okay, so if you want to go to YouTube, go type in what's that thing U2 edition. That may help. Anything from the U2 spy plane, I don't buy for a second. This one's called Inquiry Regarding Your YouTube Videos. Very formal. Mark, I just wanted to send you an email regarding the profound effect your video had on me. To be specific, the one titled They Hide God with the Biggest Lie Ever, Flat Earth. I've been very interested in this while researching, which is what led me to you. I do not claim an organized religion. However, I closely align with agnostic. I am open and spiritual to an extent. I believe in a creator, just not what mankind has perceived it to be. I know it is normal for people to question what their purpose in life is or ponder the question, why are we here or who created us? I just wondered your opinion about a few things. Why do you think a firmament was made? Do you think it is where we go when we die? I wonder why our government would lie about the shape of our earth. I just wondered what you think on a more spiritual level and go more in depth as to why this is happening. I wonder why governments do not think we can handle knowing we cannot escape the earth. I think because the lie has gone on for so long, it would create a domino effect causing other lies to be discovered. Pfft, bingo, there you go. 
Uh, although I'm still going to send him a link to my channel because if he just saw the, the hide God with the biggest lie ever, he probably... Oh, he did find a way to email me. I wonder if he's gone to my YouTube channel yet, though. This really fascinates me. If you would like to talk with me more about this, let me know. I thought I would at least try to reach out to you. Love your videos. Would love to hear your input. Thanks, T. Marie. So I will send T. Marie a link to my channel when I get a chance. Moving on. Is a painting or real? Someone I know posted this on Facebook with a tagline. Thank you, science. Looks like fake to me. Photo attached. Yeah, it's yeah, it's obvious. It's a moon hovering over the Earth, photo attached. I just refrained from post. I had to refrain from posting it, or is it real? Who knows? No, it is not real. But thank you for sending it to me. But and, and by the way, send me any photos you want. Seriously, I love to to see anything that's out there. This one's from Victor. Hello, Mark. I've been watching numerous discussions and videos of proofs of flat Earth. I find it intriguing and very convincing. However, the issue of eclipses puzzles. What is with the eclipses this week? How would a full lunar eclipse occur in the flat earth models we see illustrated with the moon and sun rotating within the firmament? I have seen a model where the sun and moon remain at opposite ends of the disk, which I think would be wrong. But what moves between the sun and uh, the moon during lunar eclipse, the surface of whatever is moving between the moon? I, I get it. It is part of the display system that's up there. If you believe in the firmament, if you believe in the Truman Show, if you believe in the enclosed world, Everything in the sky is possible, which is one of the reasons if you don't believe in an enclosed system, if you don't believe in a dome or a firmament, then you're going to have a much tougher time answering this question. But for me, the enclosed world, Truman Show, I'm totally on for that. Okay. The guy from Glasgow emailed me again, but this one, he, he wrote something different. He goes... He goes, City of Ember, the movie City of Ember is, in my opinion, where we're at. The system is breaking down, some may or may not know, but a scramble to control is underway. That's from Rob, who's staying ahead of the curve. That's what he signs it off as saying. City of Ember is a very underrated movie, in my opinion. Check that up. It's one of Bill Murray's movies on top of it. There's there's various stars in there, but he plays the mayor of this city that was buried underground deliberately as a, as a designated survivor city after an apocalypse. And after several generations, and they were down there for hundreds of years, after several generations, they forgot that, that there was a world above them. All they knew was the city. They literally did not know there was anything else around. And it's fascinating. You check it out if you get a chance. A very cool kind of an enclosed world type movie. And uh, interesting to watch. Very, very uh, different sort of movie. This one's called Holographic Universe. Hi, Mark. My name is Cassandra. I'm new to Flat Earth, but it's making a lot of sense. I first listened to your show because I thought your views would be funny and <laughs> would have a good laugh. <laughs> That's awesome. Instead, you were both open and your arguments were quite logical. I've been ta talking to my friends and family into watching your videos by telling them that they are interesting and the theories aren't as crazy as you might think. Their curiosity is getting the best of them. The key is to make them think, I still believe the earth is round without me actually saying I still believe it's round. There you go, coming at them sideways. I've learned that if I tell people I watch your videos and now I believe the earth is flat, they are threatened and they shut down the conversation. I've learned to lead them to your videos and let you speak for yourself. This girl could run one of my churches. Have you ever heard of the book The Holographic Universe by Michael Talbot? I highly recommend it. I believe this book adds another dimension to the Flat Earth argument. If you've already read it and mentioned it on your show, I would love to know which episode. To me, the book validates my spiritual beliefs. I don't know what your reaction to the book would be, but I would love to find out. After all, if the Earth is really flat, what else is there about the universe that we could be misinterpreting? I hope you find my suggestion interesting. Thank you for your show. Sincerely, Cassandra. P.S. Did you hear the Crow episode when he admitted to seeing the dome over the Earth? Yes, I did. And no, I have not read Michael Talbot's stuff or read any of it. So I may have to dig in if I have time. But I've been pretty busy as of late. I'll, I'll try. I'll, I'll do what I can. This one's called A Minute of Your Time. Dear Mark, hi, I'm James, currently living in Indonesia. I've been looking into Flat Earth about two years now, doing my own research. Those flight paths I've been taking so suspicious how it curves. 
took six months to firmly believe when eventually I found you and Eric. Unlike America in Indonesia, there's a lot already who don't believe in a ball earth. Just pose the question and yeah, they start questioning and more research you've done, the more answers. I have people here labeling me as flat earth leader in Indonesia. <laughs> Jokes and rubbish aside, I have a question for you. Here it is. My wife here asked something I couldn't answer as we were looking at the moving moon. Oh boy, here we go. She noticed whenever I look it up uh, as if we were in the center of a dome, visually speaking, wherever we are on earth looking up, the center curves vertically away. She said if we were in Australia or Antarctica, wouldn't it be different? It wouldn't seem like the center of the dome. I really hope you do read this email and a small reply would make my day. You may put my question on your channel if it's not too silly of a question. No, it's not. Just the paragraph should do. Just wanted to say thanks. I support your what you're doing, buddy. Keep informing us, please. There's so many haters. I just hope it doesn't get to you. Take care. Take it easy. Protect yourself. People like you, they mess with. Like the guy who invented harmless cigarettes back in the day and those guys who made non- uh, gasoline cars, Tesla, they drive them crazy, then kill them off. Just be, <laughs> that's great. Just be yourself and stay safe. Not get killed off, right? Uh, kind regards, James. P.S. My personal opinion about the shape of the earth, we won't be able to fully understand it. It's clearly not a ball falling down. The plane is flat, yes, but I believe more on what Tesla said. The earth is a realm. I open a door from here, and the other side, I'm in Canada. That would be awesome. Cheers! Yeah, when it comes to the stars in the Southern Hemisphere, I believe in, in multiple projection systems, meaning that you have one set of stars going one direction, another set of stars going another direction, depending on where you are uh, on this flat world. And again, not hard to simulate. We, we've been doing it now in software for over 15 years. This one's called, we have time for, yeah, a few more. This one's called Satellite Tracking Software. I downloaded a satellite tracking app and it has all the serious satellites and other ones. It shows all these different types of orbits and shows them moving in real time. Low Earth and up to 24,000 kilometers. So how do we get around this? I can only imagine low Earth orbits, but no more than that. Just wondering if you had a video explaining it. Thanks. I don't have a video explaining that, but there's lots of others that are. And that is... Why are you believing in satellites? You're looking up on a public mainstream media system that tells you there's satellites and where they are. The same system that also tells you where all the planes are, even though it was designed by all the same people, the Department of Defense. The same guys that told you that the Americans went to the moon. Don't trust anything up there. Unless there is high defi ne definition video, in fact, now it should be 4K video of everything all the time. Don't believe it. If there's no videos of satellites that are up there, there's no satellites up there. If the interior shots of the International Space Station with all the people supposedly walking around, if those are being faked, then there's no people up there. And if there's no people up there, there's a reason for it. Nothing's in orbit. Nothing. In fact, the only things that might be hovering up there are balloons from the NASA program. Look up, look up the NASA balloon program. I want to have fun with that. Uh, this one's from Luis. People say they can't be deceived. It was a picture. Oh, yeah, an illusion of somebody picking up a, a desk full of things. Very interesting picture. Again, we are designed to fall for, for illusions. Want to have some fun? Look at, uh, I, it was Clue 12, which I did, which is called Real Eyes, which went into the whole concept of illusions and how the human beings seem to be designed to fall for illusions. Look at there's we all we all have seen them. There's tons of them out there that can be done in 2D or 3D. This one's called Questions about Planet X and the Firmament Layout. Hi Mark, I wrote previously, and if you have answered on a show, I apologize for the re-asking. I haven't seen the last few shows. I have found this subject like everyone else by accident in my research. After viewing They Are Hiding God, I was mouth dropped. Mouth dropped. That's that's like a band name. That's awesome. Mouth dropped. Now on stage. Performing their song, Drool. Oh, seriously, I should be working for a marketing company. After that, it was over. Now I am ridiculed as everyone else that brings up Flat Earth. So as far as questions, there isn't too many places to turn. I'm re as is. 
Planet X, is this a real thing and how would it and other comets, asteroids work with the firmament? No, it is not real. Planet X is a fantastic distraction. It's one of their better ones, actually, because it's deep. There's a lot of cool little hints about Planet X. Will Planet X rear its ugly head in the sky? Well, it might, but it's not going to be real. It's going to be fake, and that's part of the that's part of the, the ride, the Bill Hicks version of this, uh, that it's a part of part amusement park, part school, part planetarium, part terrarium. There could be a, a giant sky cataclysm up there, but it's not going to be real. There's still going to be a lot of people panicking. Are they inside it? And if not, how do they penetrate it to hit Earth? They're not going to. Second is about the layout of the firmament. Is space inside the firmament or above or below the firmament? There you go. Who told you there was space to begin with? You keep going. I, I'm not, not picking on you, but it's your conditioning. NASA told you there was space. If you're biblical, God made the sun and the moon, but it was NASA that told you how big they were and how far away. Okay. And they told you that about everything else, all the planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Pluto, so, so all these things, everything that they, all the probes they sent out, it's all back to the same people, NASA, the group that was formed in 1958 to help hide this thing. It's your conditioning. Anyway, uh, sorry if it's a confusing question. It's why I seek answers. Thank you. And keep sharing the truth. One conscience. Thank you. I think we got time for one more. Let's find a good one to end on. This one's called helping to get the word out. You know what? This might be it. Mike Horde in Atlanta. Mark, most everyone I know uses YouTube, but very few of them watch it anywhere besides on their phones. Most of them have horrible data plans. People don't want to watch a long video on their phone or even on a tablet. Come on. I have been downloading the videos since I was converted to Flat Earth. We have to keep them in case YouTube ever turns on us. I am burning the videos to DVD so that the average person can just watch them on their TV and pass them along when they are done. Additionally, I print screenshots of memes and leave them for coworkers to go through. None of my coworkers ever argue or hassle me. That's probably because they're afraid. Don't worry about the trolls. They live on the internet. Most people will not argue with you in person. And the best way to argue with that person is not to. You can't win everybody over, but you can plant the seed. Uh, is that good enough to end on? Or should we do one more? What do you think? Let's try one more. And let me do two more. This one's from Nicholas. Hey man, I watch your videos about the flat earth. How can I prove to my parents that it is flat? They laugh at me. Don't bring it up to your parents. Leave it on a screen somewhere. Let it autoplay in the background. Don't tell them that you're into this because your parents are going to worry about you and take you in for psychological testing. Okay, we can't end on that one. How about this one? You know what? We'll end on a pseudo trolley video. Or, uh, well, he was talking about a video. Why do you have to play a character? That's the name of it. Mark, listening to your interview with Daphne Rimmel, and you mentioned that you have to stay in character. I've heard you say this, Patricia, in the past about the two of you have to stay in character or play characters on your show. This admission has made me very skeptical about you and your intentions. Can you explain yourself and why you say this sometimes? Why do you have to play a character if you're truly being transparent of your beliefs? Just curious and want to ask you. Hope Washington has been treating you well and Colorado is still beautiful since you left. Thanks, Chris. And actually, I already emailed this guy and, and uh, got a response back. He was, he was only kind of messing with me, which was I, character is just a, a figure of speech. What I meant is, is that when we're trying to get this message out to people, we try to hit the broadest range of people that we possibly can, which means we do have to, at least I do and Patricia does, and, and there are a lot of other people do it. We try to be somewhat, everybody's got some level of being politically correct in one way or another. Everybody draws the line somewhere. As I okay, some people say, oh, I don't draw any lines anywhere. It's like, well, maybe not. I mean, everyone's got some crazy things in their head and that nobody wants to give them give everybody all the crazy all the time the point here is that we try to get the message out to the the masses and to do that you've got you know you've, you've got to keep it somewhat you don't want to offend too many people look i try to stick with flat earth so any other topics that that take away from it i try to avoid 
I don't try to attack any demographic groups. I don't hate anybody. That's really true. I don't. So when when I'm talking, I, I try to be as friendly and as optimistic as possible, trying to not to be uh, overly dooming gloomy. And you'll see that if on my uh, um, my survival guide, which I put out there, which uh, even though it's a end of the world apocalypse survival guide, I wrote it in a way to make it sort of lighthearted because panicking doesn't get you anywhere. So that's why, and which is why I do this when I'm when I'm answering the emails now. I try to be as optimistic as I can and try not to attack anybody because look, I opened my day with flat earth. So how can I judge any of you that are writing your emails to me? And by the way, let's end it on this. If you want me to read your email on the show, send me an email. And if you don't want it and send it to M sergeant 23 at comcast.net. If you don't write that down, it's on every single description of every video I've ever made. And it's in the video somewhere. If you don't want me to read your email on the show, but you want to email me anyway, put it somewhere in the title or in the first line saying, don't read on show exclamation point, put some exclamation points in there. Don't fill up the screen with those things though. And that's it. So thanks very much guys. And quick reminder, check out, cause there's going to be a whole bunch of videos now between uh, today and the fall. And that is the first full international flat earth conference or Flat Earth International Convention or whatever you want to call it is going to be in the fall and everybody is going to be there and it's going to be great. It's going to be in Raleigh, North Carolina. So check it out when you get a chance. Anyway, see you later, guys. Stay flat.